I'm pretty happy with that. Are you happy with that? I'm happy with that. Okay. Now, we light the, the fires of ice and guard underneath it. Light the fires of ice and guard underneath it. You know, the Native Americans basically terraformed the entire continent, um, continents of North and South America using fire as a tool. And a lot of the species of plants in the Americas co-evolved with that understanding that brush fires were a part of life. So this isn't exactly unnatural. That having been said, we're going to douse it anyway. I'm all in favor of letting it burn out about 10 feet. I think you're right. Nice thing about having it burned is that it won't catch on fire anymore once it's already gone. And so letting it burn out to a sufficient range is a really good thing to prevent bush fires. Well, I want to say this is definitely one of the in terms of total heat production, this is one of the hotter fires I've ever made. Well, we are about three hours in on our dual charcoal batch. We have the barbecue going over there and then we have our retort going right here. Um, this has been a learning experience. It has been a learning experience. So we thought that the retort would be a lot more efficient um, and we thought it would be the greatest thing ever. It turns out that there are some problems with the retort. One problem is that uh, we don't seem to be able to get it quite high enough temperature for the escaping gases to burn up. They've kind of started burning and then stopped burning and then started burning and then stopped burning. That seems to be partially because a lot of the heat just escapes out horizontally and vertically. If we had it insulated with cinder blocks, we'd probably get better performance. Another thing that's been kind of interesting to look at with the retort is how much wood we'd ha we've had to burn underneath it to get the wood inside to turn into charcoal. So that's the difference between the retort method and kind of the uh, light a fire inside your container method. With the light a fire inside your container method, the fire's inside, it's burning, and that's where the heat is coming from here the heat is all coming from another fire that you light outside. So you end up using a huge amount more wood. 
Um, I was very surprised at how much wood we used. Kind of a fun historical fact is that Sherwood Forest of Robin Hood fame used to be 100,000 acres, and now it's only about a, a thousand acres, so about 1% of its original size. One reason for that is that during the Industrial Revolution, huge portions of the Sherwood Forest were turned into charcoal. The charcoal, of course, helped to fuel Industrial Revolution processes like melting steel. So we've kind of been seeing a similar thing happen where we have to consume huge amounts of wood just to make one batch of charcoal. Based on that so far, I think I actually prefer the method that we've been using with a barbecue where you light a fire inside and then kind of starve it of oxygen. Do you want to say something profound about charcoal? Charcoal's dope, yo.